All right, am I on? Okay. Um, so, because leases were hard and that project was stalling, Intel decided I should go work on something else. So, actually, other, <laughs> it wasn't even Intel, it was Kristoff. But, uh, <laughs> um, so, I worked on a little project called uh, Protection Key Supervisors. Right before the talk uh, at breakfast, uh, Dan asked me, so why is it called Supervisor Protection Keys? I have no idea. Um, I know that user space protection keys were PKU, so. Um, so this little project, uh, I, the overview is that uh, version 10 is posted to LKML right now. And the, the quick summary is that this overlays additional protections um, on top of the page table protections. And um, this, this feature already exists in PowerPC and x86 uh, for user space pages. Um, what this feature does is add that same protection for supervisor pages. And uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't do execute permissions, but you can avoid write or um, read. Basically, any access uh, is the protections that you can overlay on top of the current kernel mappings. Uh, the protections can be disabled and enabled on a thread and CPU local basis. So when you actually change the permissions in, in the hardware, it's actually happening on just that local uh, CPU core. Um, so the, the nice thing about this is you can change protections quickly for a large range of pages with no TLB flushes in a very local and targeted manner. So, um, and this is why I got roped into this feature is because I work on persistent memory and persistent memory is this large memory space and we wanted to be able to prevent um, random users from writing to this large memory space. So that's my first use case there. Um, and the problem with this is that originally we thought, hey, this is, you know, we're, we're kind of add these calls in and, and when any, anybody needs to access a, a page, you know, we can flip these permissions really quick. We'll get access. Um, the rest, all other threads, all other CPUs won't have access to this, this um, surface. But the problem is that, and we, so we ended up abusing the KMAP interface. The problem is that KMAP has a number of places where the mapping is not done as intended. The mapping is done in a way that it basically does a long-term mapping. So it basically k-maps something, takes that pointer, stores it away, other threads come in and use that pointer to access the mapping and you know yada yada. Um, just for reference, there's a couple other use cases, page table protection and kernel keys protection were a couple other use cases that were posted along the way as I got to V10. Um, the page table protection, some of you are familiar with it. Um, Rick, Rick Ed, Edgecombe uh, basically did that patch set, and the idea there was to protect the kernel page tables uh, from using this mechanism. So again, because we can turn this on and off, it's local, so we can you know, make sure that only the thread that's updating those page tables updates those page tables at the right times. So there's been a couple other use cases we thought of, but these are the these are the three that we've actually written code for and kind of tested a little bit. And the PMAME stray write is the one that I'm really focused on. So what is the issue? Like I'm in version 10, there's been lots of reviews, there's been feedback, people, there's been a couple LWN articles on this. So, you know, why is this, why am I here? Because this conference is all about the future, where are we going? Well, the real issue is that um, and the issue isn't that high mem's going away because high mem should go away. You know, we, we're in a 64-bit world now. The idea of needing to map high pages and 32-bit kernels with, high, with large amounts of memory is, is somewhat antiquated. And I say somewhat because I've, I've read the articles and I know that there's ARM CPUs out there that still require high mem. And, and so, you know, even Linus is, is not getting away, you know, he's not going to delete it anytime soon. But we're moving in that direction. You know, effectively KMAP and KMAP Atomic are deprecated. Um, KMAP local page was created by Thomas uh, um, uh, and he did that 
basically to help support this feature. So, you know, my original um, way to fix this was to introduce a KMAP local or KMAP thread, I think I called it, I forget. And, and so that was a way to basically audit all the KMAP sites and say, well, these are all the sites that do the right thing. They KMAP the page, they do their little um, access, and then they unmap the page, and they're all in this thread, and they work great with PKS, and, you know, and most of the file systems that PMEM cares about anyway are covered by that. There's a couple other, and, I, and I've actually updated ButterFS as well, um, and there's a couple other places. So, and we actually have um, some work going on in that area right now to, to convert all these KMAP sites. Uh, but we're kind of growing this alternative access, which is page address, and obviously page address isn't new. Everybody, you know, it's there and it's been used. But the problem is it can't work because there's no corresponding unmap. There's no corresponding unlock, so to speak, right? And so really, PKS is, is the first, but probably not the first, situation where we have extra protections on the direct map where we're going to want to basically remove those protections temporarily and then restore them after. So, and we also have other places that we're looking to split the direct map and so the idea of just adding page address whenever somebody needs access when, when HiMem goes away, I, I don't think is a good solution going forward. I think we need to make sure that we bake in the idea that just accessing the direct map isn't, isn't going to be viable with all the extra protections and other things that we're doing with the direct map. So, you know, a couple of ideas that I've had is really easily just say we redefine what KMAP means. It's no longer a high memory access thing. It's literally just give me the kernel mapping for this page. Give me the kernel virtual address for this page. So, you know, obviously in 64-bit, it doesn't do anything. There's no mapping. It just gives me the address, and that's what it does now. Um, another idea is maybe a lightweight VMAP. You know, where maybe a, a mapping actually is created. I don't kind of like that idea, but. <laughs> or, or we just, you know, make VMAP better. I mean. Possibly, yeah. idea, I know. But I mean, th there's, there's, there's lots of um, caching of things that VMALOC, like VMALOC as a whole could be doing and doesn't because we've never really cared too much about its performance. And I think if there were some targeted efforts to make VMALOC and VMAP more efficient, like, it just could be better for us all, all around. Okay. So, so, and that helps solve the problem of, you know, a mapping that you, is long term. So, you know, because right now our, our kind of line in the sand is if you really need a long term mapping, then you need to use VMAP. And in fact, the patch set that I've uh, submitted, V10, and actually it's been in there since, I don't know, V6 or 7, is the DM, the DM cache basically, if it sees, uh, these, this protection enabled, it, it forces a VMAP on some pages, and I forget the details there, but, you know, it was already doing a VMAP in certain situations, so I just said, well, you can't use KMAP in this situation, but we probably should just make it use VMAP all the time. I'd have to go back and revisit that DM code, in the, the um, device mapper code. So. Um, and, and maybe the alternative is something to the direct map, right? Um, you know, we don't actually have a direct map, um, which I think some people are trying to, you know, look at this stuff. Uh, I even saw some people suggest that we just map memory on the fly. I don't think that's ever going to work. Um, I don't think it's going to be performant. So, you know, that's, that's kind of my idea. So, thoughts? You know, can we, can we redefine what KMAP means? Um, and certainly, you know, something like KMAP local page, I think, probably needs to leave, live on even once HiMem goes away. So at least for some, for at least one use case, the nice thread local mapping uh, use case, I think we need to preserve that interface. And maybe we change the name to something else. We could do a global grep replace, I guess. Um, but I'm okay just leaving the name. Is anyone in this room thinking about Cherry at all? I'm sorry, I didn't. Do, do, Cherry? Cherry? Okay, sorry. all right. So Cherry is a research project at the University of Cambridge. It's being led by Robert Watson, 
Uh, I know Jessica Clark, who, who works on it, which is how I know so much about it. Um, basically, it is a capability-based system. I think there's been an article in LWN about it. Am I right there, John? Do you do that? No? Okay. Sorry? It's been mentioned. Okay. That's probably what I'm thinking of. <clears throat> um, yes, it has like a 128-bit, 129-bit address space, something like that. And um, it, it, no, no it, it's not properly 128-bit. Like, no object in it is really 128 bits in size. No individual object is more than 64-bit. Uh, but it's using the extra bits of address space as basically a tag, as a uh, protection key. As basically, you're making the address bit space so big that you can't search it. And so um, they're basically they, they're, they're based in FreeBSD. And so FreeBSD is getting support for Cherry. And um, the, 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 the people involved with it are, are, they come from the BSD side of the world. Uh, and they took a look at supporting Cherry with Linux, and they ran away screaming because our type system is all wrong for them. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, that, that's kind of the opinion of outsiders on our pile of crap. And, you know, we, 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 we swim in our crap every day, and, and I should drop this metaphor. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, we, 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 we know ourselves, right? We, 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 we know how, how to work with the system we have. And um, if, if anyone were trying to think about it, this would be a really great time to, to speak up. But since this is clearly the first time many of you are hearing about Cherry, it spells C-H-E-R-I. And um, everything about the project is full of Cherry, Cherry puns. So like, there's a board called Morello because there are Morello cherries. And, you know, anyway, it's, it's, it's kind of cool. Um, but it's, it's a really interesting, and um, so they have FPGAs. I think they may actually have taped out a CPU that is now in being manufactured. I mean, you know, it's, it's not like being manufactured on seven nanometer or anything crazy, right? The, these are uh, fundamentally university people, but they do have quite a lot of interest um, from ARM Limited um, or whatever their company is called these days. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's real, it does exist, the hardware exists, you, 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 you can get a board and, and boot FreeBSD on it um, in this more secure mode. And, you know, this is not a million miles away from being basically the same thing. Um, that, that's how PKS works. It takes a few bits in, in the virtual address and... Yeah, but their virtual addresses are 128-bit, so... It, it, they have it, a lot is, more bits. Yeah. To play. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah it, it's, it's different, but it's 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 interesting, and it's probably something we should keep an eye on. If if not, we work on it properly. So, you know, if anyone's inspired, uh, take a look at getting Linux working on a, a, a Cherry CPU. What? Um, Mike, because I I can't even hear you. Sorry. The, the question was if ARM does something like Cherry, and as far as I know, it's a joint project between the ARM and the Cambridge University. Ah, okay. Thanks. Sorry. So, as a pretty heavy user of KMAP, right, like, personally, I don't care, right? Like, if you want to change the interface and, like, change how we do mappings or whatever, like, go for it, man. Like, just tell me what new function I'm supposed to use and I'll go and convert it. Because really the only time we care about it is to write to our metadata pages, right? Like we have our helpers that came up the page and then do our writes and updates and we unmap. Like okay. if I got to call something else or allocate differently or whatever, like that is the least interesting part of ButterFS. I will just go change some functions and make it work. Okay. Cool. I was kind of hoping Christoph would be here, but because I was expecting him to yell at me. The, the other comment I'll make from the ButterFS point of view, and this will be important for the page cache sharing stuff as well, uh, every couple of years we end up writing a debugging patch where we intentionally set pages read-only so we can figure out who is changing them on us without our knowledge. Um, and this would make that a lot easier. It would be something oh. we could actually leave in the kernel and just have it a mount option or a, a config option or something. So. Uh, Sweet. It would, it would be better for us. Cool. Yeah, so 
Yeah, I, like I said, the, the, the support for the core idea seems to be pretty good. So yeah, um, I'll ping you guys when, when so, I land. I'll, 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 we'll find Christoph, but I'll just state the, state the direct. Uh, Christoph's observa observation was that um, why can't I, this is Christoph speaking, why can't I just use page address, page address directly? Why do we have to go through KMAP local page? And so I think if, we're gonna, if Linux, Linux is gonna do Cherry, if Linux is gonna care about kind of local access permissions, I think, I think what, you're, what you're arguing for is, yeah, we, we need to keep KMAP local page and if you have an inclination to use page address, you're, you're getting in the way of some of these fancier permission capabilities. Yeah, and it just, I mean, page address is gonna stick around, but it needs to be like localized. And this gets back to one of the comments I made in the MM section yesterday was, you know, understanding where those interfaces are, like, because, you know, I can see a driver writer going, oh, page address gives me the virtual, oh, look, my driver works, you know? So anyway, yeah, we'll, we'll get back to trying to document this really well too. And if, if we are thinking about making changes to, to this interface, um, I, I would like to beg for something along the lines of uh, something that supports multiple pages. Because one, one, of the, one of the things I have to do with the folio work is say, well, what do I do for stuff that calls KMAP local page? It's like, well, I need to select one page out of folio. So we now have KMAP local folio, uh, which takes a folio and a byte offset within that folio. As, as, as it's two arguments. Did, did you land that? Yeah, that's landed. Oh, I missed the patch, okay. Sorry. No, well, no, <laughs> the, my the, fault, the, I should <laughs> Oh, really? It's your fault you didn't find it in the like 800 folio patches I've sent, really? Well, I fault? recently unsubscribed from LKML, so <laughs> I, I just, I couldn't. I'm trying to lay thing, but we'll see. Um, so, but, so it, it, it's, not, it's not really a great interface because you, 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 you tell it, I want this, I want to access at this offset of that folio. Okay, that's great. But you only get to access up to the end of the page that that offset happens to land in. And that seems like I've, I've, I've really given everyone a landmine. Um, but the whole KMAP local stuff, KMAP local and KMAP atomic for that matter, only gave you a page anyway. And it's, it's kind of nasty. And so, you know, the alternative is VMAP, but, uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I would really like it if we could have a KMAP local range okay. <laughs> where, where, where you gave us a folio, a start address, and a, and a length. Right. Maybe. But again, this is a temp, like temporary mapping. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Oh, and, and there's a caveat to that, which is, of course, if you're on 64 bit, you do get to access as much as you want past the end of that, right? In, right. In, unless, you, unless you turned on the debugging. It's like, ah. Uh, right. Okay. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Like so, we have a similar thing inside ButterFS because we have we support uh, multi-page metadata blocks. Like by default, we have 16k metadata blocks, and like all of our helpers, just if you give it a byte offset and a length or whatever, and it just loops through and goes, okay, this is the next page. K okay, unmap the previous page. K map the next page. Do the thing, and so like this like. That's literally where we came up and came map. So, like, right. you tell me to new, use the new shit, and I just go change these helpers, and then we're using the new stuff. Okay, and I'll see what I can do because it could be it could be nice to you know optimize a 64-bit path, and then in the 32-bit path just fall back to some loop, and you know, because not who cares? Because I don't want to you know I know there's people out there, but you know it's 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 not the optimal path. So. Yeah, I mean, if I can K, if I can K map for all 16, you know, what all four pages or whatever, and get the whole thing, and I can just do my thing, then cool. hooray! But I already have a loop, so I'm, I'm good either way. So awesome. So I was going to ask a question about the, the debug facility. Do you care about the? Do you care about the? Um, uh, TLB shoot down overhead, like, I mean, like, you, you're paying that today, right? So it's, it's kind of just a, just a debug facility? Yeah, so, like, we straight up just, <laughs> we do this fun thing, and actually, Jan gave me this idea, like, 10 years ago, where, like, I will 
set the slab pages, like slab sizes to page size. <laughs> and then um, whenever you access it to, to write it, like I'll put a help, I forget exactly how we end up doing it, but basically just do um, write protect. So if we're done using it, like we unwrite protect it to update it and then we write protect it otherwise, and then we just wait for the system to crash. And at this point, like this is usually our, like we have no idea, something's wrong, and so we do this, and we don't care about performance at that point. It's just to figure out who's corrupting our pages. Okay, so, but, it, but it's like totally space inefficient, and oh, yeah, you, no, you, you it, wouldn't turn it on during production. No, God, no, I, I install it on a thousand machines and wait for something to blow up. Like, <laughs> Did you read that? Right, right, yeah, yeah. So I think this feature is like if you wanted to leave it on all the time and you want to make it fast. Um, but. Okay. More time for is it break? I didn't. I'm sorry. I couldn't hear. Okay. Yeah, we got one more session. We got gold one up. So we have more time to talk about this. Thank you.